Right. Welcome to Charge Heads. Look what we've got here. <laughs> wow. I mean, this is a real scale up and scale down, isn't it? I thought you'd like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite a comparison, isn't it? So this one's the one going in the TVR, right? <laughs> oh, you wish. Unfortunately, that weighs a quarter of a tonne, so it ah. you uh, bend your car in half. <laughs> that's the one we're using really big commercial stuff. Right. Um, that's the one you're getting in a TVR, which is a really good Tesla uh, small drive unit. It is, very good. From the front of a Model S, I think. Yep, one of those. And that one is a little Mitsubishi iNeve uh, unit. Ah. And it's a nice little comparison. All of these will drive vehicles along, but they've all got very different characteristics. And one of the big characteristics is how much power they produce. So yes. obviously the little iMeve unit is 47 kilowatts. You think that's not a lot, but it's 130 foot pounds of torque, so it's adequate for a small yeah, car. Yeah, absolutely. Your monster unit you're getting in the TVR monster, monster, monster. Uh, is 220 kilowatts, 300 horsepower. Yep. Very pleasant indeed. That's proper TVR levels of performance. Absolutely. This one's 280 kilowatts. Oh. Now you might not think that's a lot more than that, but this one also is 2,850 newton meters of torque. Excuse me, a baking powder? 2,850 <laughs> newton meters of torque. I think that probably ripped the back diff out of the TV. It snap your car in half. But another interesting characteristic is how much power they can produce continuously. Yes. So all these motors, they can produce a certain amount of power for a short period of time. And when they're at full power, they're getting hot. They're not efficient when they're at full power. Mm -hmm. Well, they're reasonably efficient, but not as efficient. So um, they start getting hot and that limits how long they can run at full power. There's lots of other factors involved as well, but that's one of the key ones. So that IMEV unit goes from 47 kilowatts. And if you're just running constantly flat out all the time, it goes down to about 25, 30 kilowatts. Okay, that doesn't sound too much of a difference. It's not, it's a very well designed unit. And in fact, Mitsubishi used that in their Peaks Pike, Pike's Peak even. <laughs> You've been Basically. hanging around me too much, haven't oh, you, Ralph? Yeah, <laughs> um, and they've actually tuned that one up to 200 kilowatts. Oh, wow. Almost the same power as that. Yeah, no, uh, tuning up uh, motors, I think, is something for the future. Well, and obviously the yeah, present, yeah, yeah, but absolutely. I think that's something that maybe something for the Trevor on the small drive unit reduces the efficiency, increases the heat. Very much so. See, I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning. This one, 220 kilowatts. Yep. Difficult to find accurate data on it but as far as I can work out and I could be wrong it goes down to 30 kilowatts if you just have it flat out all the time only 30 so if you just give it full beans for say 30 seconds or so yeah you're fine but if you want it up full beans for a couple of minutes it will drop down and down and down now that's fine because you can't drive it up full power for a few minutes because you'll be doing 100 and whatever miles an hour and you'll visit the scenery pretty rapidly so it's actually a really good design. By making it small and lightweight, it helps the performance of the vehicle. Right. And it doesn't need to have a huge amount of continuous power because you're never going to drive it continuously at 220, 300 horsepower. Unless you're on the track. Then it gets complicated. Right. And then you have to do quite a lot of work to make these work well. It can it, be done though. How, how would you make this motor work more efficiently or for long period of time at the peak? Is it just about cooling? It's about cooling, but it's also about how you drive it. So you can do things like run shorter pulses at higher voltage. And there's all sorts of other tricks you can do, um, which extend the, the rev range so you can rev it to higher speeds. Yeah. Um, and power is torque times speed. Right. Um, allied with different cooling on it. And so there's quite a few different things you can do with it. And also you can make physical modifications to it. Um, to it to improve it so it's got a lot of potential but it doesn't need to have that huge amount of no. continuous power no if it's going if i'm going to take it down the uh, the twisties or go for a you know go for a bit of a a, a joy ride mm. um <laughs> i don't think i'll be needing to go flat out all the time no you've got to back off through the corner <laughs> depending on yeah, you know or whether you go through a hedge backwards or something yeah. Fingers uh, crossed not. Whereas this thing goes in large commercial vehicles that we do. Okay. And that could be hauling, say, 20 tonnes up a steep hill. Wow. And that could be there for minutes on end. You know, if you're going up one of the big hills in, you know, Yorkshire or Scotland or something like that, this could be running for minute after minute after minute flat out. Um, so that needs much more continuous power. Okay. So the peak, did you say it was two? The peak is 280 on that. Yeah. Uh, but the continuous is... 180. Oh, wow. 
So a that's massive impressive. difference. And you think, well, that's quite big and heavy compared to that. But actually, the big difference is in the amount of power it can produce continuously. So for commercial vehicles, that's the right tool for the job. So that, uh, that 180 kilowatt peak, just to give, I suppose, uh, our viewer an idea, that's the same as the Zonic motor, isn't it? The um, yeah. uh, so Zero EV are putting out. continuous power that's amazing. is the same as the Zonic flat out. Wow, okay, impressive. But obviously it's that much bigger. And I think uh, before we uh, jumped onto screen, uh, you were saying that there is a BYD motor that oh, does yeah. something... Uh, Almost half the size. Wow, okay. Um, uh, with very similar characteristics. They're doing a lot of work on their, their, the magnets that they use on the rotor, much more concentrated magnetic field. Uh, the way they've squeezed all the windings together, they're just concentrating the whole power into a much smaller area. Very impressive piece of kit. And that's been on, used in commercial vehicles for over five years in service, and it's proving itself to be quite reliable. So there could be some used ones out there on AliExpress or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just a thought for someone else, because obviously we're using the Tesla drive unit, for now, anyway. Yeah, but, which is a yeah. great unit. I think that'll work well in there. No, looks good. I mean, and that's about 63 kilos. Yep. That's about 253. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, quite heavy. So uh, what about the weight of the uh, my my Eve Eve? Uh, Eve? That's still about for uh, forty three kilos. Right. Uh, oh, still, yeah, super. And um, with regards to uh, these motors, what, any difference in voltage um, or ampage uh, in terms of power? Yeah, absolutely. Because they've got different power ratings, that will affect the, the amount of current going into them. That one you run at uh, about four hundred and twenty volts peak. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Tesla is designed for nominal of 350 volts, so again, so 420-ish peak. Right. So they're very similar voltage characteristics, but that one being um, four times the power, four times the current going into it. So all the cables, much, much thicker. Right. This one uh, runs at 650 volts nominal, so about 740-ish peak. Wow. Okay. Uh, you're going to get similar sort of current levels to that, but at twice the voltage level. Well, what sort of kilowatt hour battery pack would you need to run something like that it efficiently? how big a vehicle you're using it and, and okay. what that vehicle's going to do. It's all about the duty cycle and what you're going to do for it. So let's, so for example, example say... In a dustbin lorry, right? Yeah, okay. Low speed, just accelerates a bit, stops, accelerates. Doesn't need a lot of battery on that. You could get no. away with maybe 100 kilowatt hour. Okay. Whereas if we put it on a 42 ton truck, um, then we're talking about six, 800 kilowatt hours minimum. Do they really have battery packs that big? Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. Impressive. Yeah. Ah, awesome. Thanks for showing us these, Ralph. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll try and put this in my boot now. <laughs> Let me just see if I can. Yeah, no, it won't. No. Nah. Nah.